Okay, welcome back. So in the last video, I was showing you adjustment layers, and we're going to continue on with this theme of non-destructive editing by taking a look at layer masks, okay? So I have my image right here, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, right-click and duplicate that layer, and we'll call this one uh, Gas Mask 1. All right. So I'm going to grab the Eraser tool first. Now, the Eraser tool. You can, you know, cut objects out with the eraser tool. Now I can come way up on this guy. Okay, you always want to get way up close to your subject when you're cutting stuff out. And uh, I'm going to shrink my brush size down. Okay, um, you can actually just do left and right square bracket to increase or decrease your brush. Or I'm on a tablet right now, so you might see my little tablet icons pop up like this sometimes. All right. So you want to shrink way down. Okay, that's still not even zoomed up up enough. You have to just get used to zooming way up on stuff if you want it to look professional at all. Okay, so of course I can start just cutting this out like so. If I gotta delete my bottom layer so you can actually see what I'm doing here. All right, so you can start to cut things out like so. And you know, if you blow it way up, you can do really accurate cutouts like this, and that's just fine. Of course, I'm being a little sloppy right there, but you know what? That's kind of the point. So I'm going to show you, you know, non-destructive edits. So obviously this is kind of hard to do and it's easy to whoa, accidentally go in and mess something up. And maybe you don't realize that you've done that and you cut the whole object out. Okay. You know, you've cut the whole rest of your guy out and you're going to use them in a composition and you realize, oh, I've, you know, cut into his eye right there. Now, if you come up here to your history, you can undo things to a point. Okay but you can only undo to your last commitment okay and if you i mean if, if you've cut this guy out and you accidentally cut into his eye and then you'd make you know a hundred different changes and you're moving these all over the place you're not going to be able to make it back to fix this little thing right here and when you do you'll have undo every single other commitment to get to this area so this is no good all right now i'm going to go ahead and bounce back to the beginning here all right now, this is where layer masks come in. Well, one of many uses for layer masks, and that is to non-destructively cut things out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a layer mask. So I can come down here and, um, of course, just like everything in Photoshop, there's 10 ways to do everything. Um, to make layer masks, I usually come down here and just make sure that the layer that I want the mask applied to is selected, and then just hit this uh, white rectangle with the circle in the middle, okay? And that just gives me a layer mask, okay? Now we can select the image, make edits to the image, or we can select the layer mask and make edits to the layer mask, all right? Now, you want to have your foreground and background color as black and white, okay? You can hit these little smaller squares in the corner to make them default, okay? For example, I'll go ahead and change this to red. All right, now if I come up here and hit these little squares, boom, they default, okay? You can also just hit D. For example, I'll make this green. I'm just gonna hit the key D and it defaults back to black and white, okay? You want these on black and white. You don't even want them on like gray, okay? You want them solid, black and white. So again, that would be, uh, here's a review from our last videos, right? Zero red, zero green, zero blue. And for the white, it would actually be full red, full green, full blue. Okay, so like so. And instead of hitting the eraser, I'm gonna hit my paintbrush, okay? And, it's, and you don't wanna have your image selected because obviously if I paint now, I'm painting on my guy, all right? And I want that. I'm gonna shrink my brush down here. You want your layer mask selected, okay? And when the layer mask is selected, and um, whoop, I'm gonna go ahead and hit my squares here, make sure those are default. I want black on top, okay? Black on top, black brush. Black on the layer mask will actually give you transparency, all right? Check it out. And uh, whoops, I better turn off that bottom layer so you actually see the transparency. Okay, and so I can just paint Okay, and it's essentially erasing, okay? No problem, right? It's erasing, and you know, maybe I'm kind of doing a sloppy job here, or I realize, you know, I kind of went in too much on his neck and it looks weird, okay? And I'm cutting this guy out, and then I stop and I realize, oh, that's all messed up, right? I can come over here, switch to white, and paint it back in. See that? Just paint those pixels right back in. You have to make sure you're on your layer mask, okay? And if I go really big here to do something extreme, just cut out a chunk of his face, you can see that it's actually showing the black where you've painted on here. And the black, again, will be transparency. Flip it over to the white, and the white will paint those pixels back in. This is a non-destructive way to cut objects out in Photoshop. And it is just awesome. And it saves so much time and gives you a lot of creative freedom too because I think the more uh, 
the braver you can be with your edits because you're not worried about destroying anything, I think the more creative freedom you really have. All right, so this is a way to cut things out. And of course you can just take your time and cut it out like that. Now, because you're using the brush and you're painting on white for full opacity or uh, full transparency for painting on black, you can use um, your paint bucket as well. Okay, you can actually also use gradients too. Yeah, give that a shot. But let's go ahead and try the paint bucket. Okay, so if I come over here and I select this uh, the square marquee or the rectangle marquee, and we'll just kind of drag a rectangle over his face. Okay, we'll come over here. Make sure layer mask is selected over here. We're gonna come grab the paint bucket. Okay, make sure the black foreground is selected, and I'm just gonna drop some paint in there. Boom, and it's gone, just like that, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. All right, now I can actually hit Shift-Command-I and invert the selection, okay? Now if I come out here and drop some paint, boom, I've just taken it all away. And you can see over here that everything is uh, in the black is transparent, everything in the white is visible, okay? So now I've actually cut out this guy's uh, face, like so, all right? All right, so that's a way to do that. Um, and the nice thing is, of course, is you decided, oh, that's not going to work. You can actually, well, there's a lot of things you can do. You can come over to your paintbrush, switch it to white, and start to paint that guy's face back in like so, okay? Yeah, not bad. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit undo a few times here. Get my image back. And let me show you some other ways to cut things out. This is a method I use a lot, actually. Um, I'd select the pen tool, all right? And uh, make sure that... I'm zoomed way in on this. The closer you can get, oh, you can actually see a little bit of transparency sneaking through right there. Let's go ahead and paint that back. So there we go. go back to my paintbrush here, or my uh, pen tool. Now, again, the, the more you zoom in, the better everything is going to look. Yes, it's a little tedious, but you just get your workflow down and you decide what's right for different situations. There's no one way to cut anything out. All right, so you just start clicking, Click and drag. If you click and drag, you can get your curves going, right? Of course, if I get extreme, I can get, you know, lots of different shapes here, but just to follow that edge, you know, fairly closely. Now, I'm not getting 100% perfect, but to the eye, that'll be just fine, because check it out, when you go back down, <laughs> yeah, totally. So it's a pretty nice way to cut things out, and let's say I'm cutting things out, and just to do it, I'm gonna make a mistake, like so. All right, and I'll just keep cutting this out like so and click and drag and I'm gonna move kind of fast here All right, just for the sake of the demo. All right In fact, I'll zoom out a little bit and again I'm telling you to zoom in to do really clean cuts, but I want to save some time for you. Let's just skip You know like so just cut this guy out Okay, and I'm gonna be sloppy on purpose in a couple parts because that's the point of showing you non-destructive editing as well and we'll go like that. And then I'll be really sloppy right here. And boom. Okay, so I'm going to cut this guy out. I'm going to right click, make selection, and click OK. Now I have a selection. All right, now there's lots of things I can do with this selection. I can uh, come to the paint bucket and I can, whoops, make sure that's selected. And make sure black selected and make him disappear like so. I'm going to undo that. I can come up here to my brush, make sure that black is selected. And I can start just erasing and see how I can be really sloppy, come way out here, but it's only going to erase in the selection. Okay, and that's a way to do a nice tight cut. Okay, like so. Okay, not bad. All right, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Um, I can hit Shift Command I or Shift Control I for using Windows and invert the selection. And now if I paint black in here, it doesn't do anything. If I go out here, it does. See that? All right, now I'm going to be using this guy in a uh, composition, but I'm going to cut it out real slowly on my own later, just so that you don't have to watch me do it. Okay, so, okay, so that's another thing that we can do. Now I'm going to go ahead and deselect that, okay? Now, of course, you can get really, really accurate by blowing up the guy way close like this and just coming in with the pen tool and that's just fine and just slowly cutting out something and just doing a really nice professional job click and drag click and drag and just getting up on the pixels in fact I'm not even close enough there's no reason why you can't be way up here you know what I mean all right so I'm gonna undo that now so that's a nice way to non-destructively edit objects okay now there's other things we can do with layer masks all right so let's go ahead and uh show you another way to select we can come over here to the quick selection tool okay now the quick selection tool 
it works okay. I'm gonna go ahead and click auto enhance up here. And um, I'm gonna just drag around this guy. All right, now I say okay, because you'll see there's areas it's gonna struggle with, all right? It's having a problem with these colors right here. It's not sure how close to the edge to get. And if I go over too much, it's probably gonna kind of pop over a little bit. See how it did right there? And it, it's smart, it, it sort of gets it, okay? Um, honestly, the fact that it gets it as nicely as it does is pretty amazing. All right, so I've selected most of the guy. Okay, kind of missing some of his chest and shirt over here. Obviously in our selection, we've selected right in here, which we did not want to select. If you actually hold down a uh, alt or option, you can unselect that area. Okay, you can also come up here and just uh, change your plus brush to a minus brush and that will subtract that area. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in here like so. All right, and I'm kind of doing a sloppy job and that's okay. Um, whoop, didn't quite get that, there we go just about there like so and you do want to get things like it's going to be somewhat sloppy but you do want to get them fairly close so that Photoshop knows what pixels that you're going for okay all right so we have a selection now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit more of his hair I'm gonna come up here to refine edge all right now it's made everything red around it so that you can get a nice look at uh what you're you know selecting all right and that's really nice there's other options up here as well right like with the black background the black background is really good to see where things have been cut out sloppy on something like this and you can see that edge is really unprofessional that's no good all right um and of course you can do it on white all right um there's times when this one's a great one to use i'm going to use um red okay and notice they call selections marching ants which it kind of looks like. All right, so back to the red overlay. Now you can come up here, all right, and you can kind of, as long as, see there's two different selections here, refine radius tool is the one that I want, and you just paint along that edge again and just tell Photoshop to pay attention to the edge a little bit, okay? And see how it kind of puffed it out a little bit more, and it's not gonna get it perfect, there's a couple of steps here, and if you hold down alter option, it'll actually turn to the erase brush and erase some of your refinement, okay? And so that's a way to really, really, really get detailed about your, your cuts because Photoshop's gonna show you why you're missed in bright red like this, all right? I'm gonna kinda come in here and just talk to the edge a little bit and tell Photoshop, you know, this is the edge that I'm thinking of. All right, and it, you know, it's not gonna be perfect. And it's going to depend on the shadows, the shadows of the background, all kinds of stuff. But it's another method, and I'll use that a few times in the composition I'm about to build with you guys. And you'll see me use this technique to cut out some birds, um, you know, get up on their feathers really well. Um, there's a little spot right there. We're going to leave that, actually, though. So that's a spot I can come fix. Let's take a look at the hair down here, all right? And let's see. The hair, for the most part, this is pretty good. I'm going to kind of... Okay, you see how it kind of brings in a little bit of the red and it's actually, that's actually pretty good because there's light from the hair coming in, all right? So this is actually a pretty nice way to cut out hair. All right, and that's a little too much right there. So I might kind of go like that. that out. Okay, getting closer. That's the neck right there is a pretty sloppy cut. Let's see if we can get Photoshop to talk to that a little bit more. It's a little bit better. And we've got some, you know, issues around here. I don't want to take too long in the video, so we'll just do part of him. Okay? Like so. And you just keep picking at it. Okay, make sure... Okay, obviously there's a pretty sloppy cut spot right in there. Yeah, right in there. So let's go ahead and talk to Photoshop a little bit and say, Hey, that edge is not so good. See how it does, that's ah, a little bit better now, okay? So I'm gonna kinda erase now by holding down Alt Option and just erase a little piece of that out. It's okay, it's okay. And that's it's gonna be fine for what we're gonna do now. So over here with the Output 2, we're gonna choose New Layer with Layer Mask, all right? All right, I'm gonna hit OK. Boom, check out what it did. Okay, it created a layer mask now, okay? So we have a transparency layer over here. In fact, let me demonstrate that. I can come over here, select the uh, layer mask, and hit Command-I to invert it. See that? Okay, not bad. Now, it's a layer mask, so make sure that the layer mask is selected. Come over here to my brush. I can get way up on this guy now, and I believe I had a sloppy cut over here. 
Yeah, right there. I'm gonna zoom down with my brush. Okay, and let's see here. I'm gonna make sure that white is selected over here. I'm gonna shrink down my brush quite a bit. Come in here and just kind of paint this in some. See that? You can kind of fix your mistakes like that. All right, and there's th there's the edge, and that's why it's struggling so hard. See that edge is almost the same color. It's really struggling with that, and that's fine, and that's normal, and it's just gonna depend on you know what subject you're cutting out. All right. Let's take a look here. All right, looks pretty good. It looks like we got a little bit of the street up here, okay? And that we don't want. And so, of course, there's lots of things we can do. We can, you know, start to just trim it out like so. Okay. Now let's just, um, again, you know, take some time with this. Every one of these should take you quite a bit of time, all right? I know there's a sloppy cut over here. I don't really like the way that looks. Just, whoops, switch this to white just kind of harden that edge up a little bit here and it's just it really depends on the object that you're cutting out okay and this one here I have to be honest there's so many clean edges on this guy I would not use this technique I would use the pen tool because it's you can get really good tight cuts with a straight edge like this guy's mask all right and there's no need for any feathering or any blending at all to make this look good you can just grab it okay now let's go ahead and uh, say this guy's cut out good enough for now all right and then you've used this in a composition you've done a bunch of things with it because you can move them around and all that and then you realize that you know oh let me do it real quick it's a little bit of something on his eye that you missed okay uh, I mean, it'd be really funny if you missed this but you know if you miss something like that you can always just go back and then fix it okay so this is why layer masks are so awesome all right cool